Come on. Hello, everybody. It's about time we do a um, another reaction. No, you could put in the game reaction to Death Battle Android 18 from Dragon Ball versus Captain Marvel from Marvel Comics. So, yes, I know I haven't been uh, coming with uh, the other Death Battles, Sub Zero versus the other guy, and those two anime characters. Eh, yeah, sorry, sorry about that, guys. So, so we are back into it. We are back into the Death Battles. Now, um, Android 18. I don't know about her, but I have seen her fight. I don't know about Captain Marvel, so I'm the, so I have to go with. So I'm going to vote for Android 18 because I don't I don't really know Captain Marvel that much. <laughs> so, so let's get started. I love a powerful Just woman. Just give it a minute. Even better one that keeps getting stronger and stronger. And today we've got two of them. Android 18, the deadly cyborg killer from Dragon Ball. And Captain Marvel, the hard-hitting, high-flying Avenger. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ah, this kind of this kind of animation. In the age 763, peace had returned to the Earth. Unsung heroes, led by the Super Saiyan Goku, had saved the world from an evil galactic tyrant. Everything seemed pretty hunky-dory until the mysterious time traveler showed up out of nowhere with a grave warning. In just three years' time, two deadly androids would rise up and ravage the Earth, all while wearing the mark of the long-forgotten Red Ribbon Army. This sounds like it's gonna get complicated real fast. To be brief, the Red Ribbon Army was the greatest military force ever known, even greater than the Earth's entire armed forces combined. Until a tiny monkey child named Goku strolled through and wrecked their shit. Dr. Jiro, <laughs> founder and lead scientist of the Red Ribbon Army, held a grudge against Goku for over 20 years. Like any mad scientist hellbent on revenge, the good doctor got back to doing what he did best. Building murder bots! And so he designed some of his deadliest creations to date, Android 17 and Android 18. Though Android isn't entirely accurate. 17 and 18 were actually humans once, siblings even. So that makes uh, them cyborgs, not androids. Okay. You'd think a doctor with Giro's prestige would know the difference. I'll just chalk it up to a classic case of revenge madness. That happens to the best of us. Android 18's real name is Lazuli, which sounds like some sort of Italian pasta dish. No wonder she kept the name 18 after brutally murdering her maker. Yeah, Android 18 and her brother were pretty unruly and a force to be reckoned with. Jiro, even with his own cyborg body, didn't stand a chance. With nothing better to do, the twins set off to ravage the world as predicted. But this time, something changed. After witnessing the compassion of the heroes, including a bald, vertically challenged martial artist named Grillin, 18 had a change of heart and joined the good guys. She even wound up starting a family with Krillin. Nice! Give it up for Krillin! Not only is he punching above his bracket, but he's laying pipe above it as well. Plus, 18 doesn't really age, so that's a serious win. Android 18 yeah. is an extremely competitive fighter with numerous deadly abilities. Giro's programming stems from decades of military dominance, granting her incredible hand-to-hand -hand combat skills and mechanically enhanced senses for superb situational awareness. And she's got the strength to back it up. This chick can embed a person straight into the side of a cliff with a single smack or shoot explosions out of her hands. She does this by harnessing Ki, a Taoist-inspired life force energy manifested through a person's spirit and vigor. With her key, 18 can fire a barrage of energy beams powerful enough to destroy buildings, continents, possibly even planets. Like the finger beam. <laughs> Talk about getting hey. finger blasted, am I right? No. Oh, you know you left. Absolutely not. <laughs> On the inside? Ugh. Android 18 <laughs> has dozens of other Shut techniques, <laughs> such as infinity bullets. 
I know what you're thinking, but it's not a magic gun with unlimited ammo. It's a stampede of energy blasts which are nearly impossible to avoid. Her photon strike lays waste to a vast area in an instant. She can even use her husband's signature technique, the Destructo Disc. It's a buzzsaw made of pure energy! Why don't more Dragon Ball characters use that thing? He uh. is just as much a defensive tool as well. Android 18 can enhance her strength, speed, and endurance with her energy, greatly surpassing the limitations uh. of her physical body. <laughs> oh yeah, and she can fly! Unlike most warriors, 18's energy supply stems from a sort of battery within. This system grants her a continuous and potentially endless supply of ki. She'll never get tuckered out. In fact, one of her favorite combat strategies is wasting time to make her enemy exhausted, then moving in to finish him off. She's making him burn up all his energy and then she's going to attack him. Like many of Dr. Giro's other androids, that's, it's even possible for 18 to steal actually, her foe's energy for strategy. herself by absorbing it through her body, increasing her power and nullifying her opponent. So you can bet she'll always go the distance. Like Rocky Balboa, except, you know, way stronger and way prettier. 18 is tough enough to deflect Goku's Kamehameha attack even while he's in Super Vegeta, Saiyan Vegeta, Blue Gohan form. Trucks. Also, Future she Gohan. can kick hard enough to break Super Saiyan Vegeta's arm. What's so impressive about breaking an arm? You broke yours once just by falling out of your chair. Uh-huh, you might have missed the Super Saiyan part there. Vegeta's extremely high key levels improve his body to support an impressive amount of weight. Leading up to the fight, Vegeta was training in 450 times gravity, making his weight about 55,000 pounds. That means the tibia in his leg would be supporting over 40,000 pounds, the equivalent of eight pickup trucks. Damn, I wish I had bones like that. I could fire so many bazookas and never have to worry about falling down. On top of that, she's able to use her constant supply of ki to easily match the speed of a Super Saiyan. We've previously established that an ascended Super Saiyan can fly approximately 340,000 miles per hour, so it's reasonable to believe 18 can do the same. Man, this ki wow. stuff is seriously awesome. Well Maybe I should start meditating <laughs> or something. Do you even know how? Yeah, all I gotta do is get drunk and sit on the floor crisscross applesauce style, right? Easy. <laughs> sure. Anyway, just like Vegeta, Android 18's key allows her to survive serious blows. She's even tanked the full brunt of a Super Saiyan key blast, capable of obliterating an entire building without a scratch. Can't say the same for that sweet ass jacket. Man, 18 is awesome. Awesome? Yes. Unstoppable? Not at all. Android 18 is unfortunately susceptible to a number of weaknesses, including her own programming. Fearing her unruliness, Jiro designed her with a remote shutdown system in place, one that both he and Krillin's friend Bulma were able to exploit. Wow, so this little thing will stop them, huh? On top of that, 18 has a reputation of being cold and apathetic. Although this is mostly just a guise, as she's always ready to defend her friends and family from threats. She even joined Goku, the man she was originally programmed to kill, for an interdimensional tournament bent on saving the universe from annihilation. It's safe to say the Super Saiyans are not the only blondes protecting the planet. Believe me, when she gets that look in her eye, you better hold on to your Dragon Balls. I know I'm being hard on you, but it's the only way you'll learn. Captain Marvel Captain has had Marvel. many names in her career. But when she was born, she was simply Carol Danvers. Carol grew up in Boston and joined the Air Force to pay for college. She quickly flew to the top of their ranks before moving on to the Air Force Intelligence. Then she joined NASA. Damn, is her superpower just having really badass jobs? Wonder if she could give me a recommendation. Working at NASA was pretty cool until aliens attacked. Carol got caught in the middle of a massive battle between the Kree aliens and a Kree superhero named Marvel, known to the world as Captain Marvel. Well, wait. Captain Marvel's secret identity is Marvel? Somebody forgot to read Superheroes for Dummies. Anyway, during the battle, <laughs> Carol got stuck in a machine called the Psych Magnetron, which exploded. Luckily for her, this was one of those explosions that turns you into a superhero. The energy from the blast merged Carol's DNA with strands of Marvel's, 
she developed an extra Kree brain lobe and gained most of Marvel's powers, see you guys transforming her recording. into a new dynamic superheroine. Except she didn't even realize it at first.